Okay, so uh, welcome to this next part of the uh, you know, prop workflow. Um, so what we're going to do is take the barrel we made in the first part and uh, we're going to prep it and then we're going to texture it. So um, if you haven't done the first part but you want to do this part, I'm going to make the barrel available for download on my Kofi site for free. Uh, it'll be in my Kofi store, you just you know, download it. Um, I'll put a link below um, and once you've downloaded that and opened it up in Blender we'll get going. So uh, let's go into edit mode by pressing the tab key and now what I want to do is do a little trim operation on this. Now what I want um, in this particular case is to remove geometry to make the prop lighter. You'll see up here we've got uh, 14,000 faces and if you don't have the statistics here, if you use this drop down and just click on the statistics little tick box there, um, you'll see that there. Um, so we can reduce that and you know that will save us some memory, um, you know, when we're texturing it and when we're, you know, using it in, you know, whichever application you want to use it. Um, so what I want to do to trim this is to remove any geometry which doesn't affect the shape uh, of the model. Now I don't want to touch any of my seam lines, these red lines here, um, because if I touch those it's going to ruin my UV map which we've done previously. Um, so what I'm going to do is in edge mode I'm going to start to select some geometry. So on these bands, for example, these are pretty flat. So I can confidently say that all of this geometry around here is unnecessary. And if I select that last one there, there we go, and press the delete key and then the dissolve edges option. There we go. So that's trimmed it up immediately and I definitely can see on the top if I select one there and press the full stop on the numpad you know we've got a whole bunch here which are not helping us and then delete and dissolve edges same under the bottom and you know we have all these just because you know we use subdivision modeling to get our shape and the subdivision has added you know um, added additional things which you know is all very well but I don't need them. There we go. The only reason I would need kind of geometry there is if I was going to do some displacement work. Um, so you know for displacement you need a little extra geometry. Geometry you know a displacement is dependent upon the amount of geometry underneath it uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use normal maps for things like that which aren't dependent upon the amount of geometry that's underneath there. So I'm going to do that for each of the bands, but I'll do the bands within, um, you know, a uh, or between videos. Uh, but just going to pop up here and we're going to trim across the top of the barrel. And again, I'll do the bottom uh, when I, uh, you know, between videos. So delete dissolve edges. I can take a few out down here. Oops, one more, there we go, and delete and dissolve edges. Uh, around the top we can do some too, so let's do that. And delete and dissolve edges. Now here is a bit of a choice really. Uh, you could leave this in, or if you really wanted to, um, you know, trim your model uh, to the fullest extent, we can select this middle piece, so just drag boxing over those to select it and then use control and plus on the numpad and then delete and faces and then if I go to edge mode I'm going to double click to select all the edges around there and then we use M and uh, for merge and then at center and that's really tidied that top up so uh, previously we were running at something like 14,000, 15,000 faces and now we're at 12,000. Might not seem much but every little helps. If you had, you know, 100 barrels in the scene that's quite a saving. 
Uh, so yeah, just be you know, mindful of that. Okay, so I'll uh, trim this all up uh, between videos, and then when we come back, we will start to look at uh, the texturing process. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, quick correction before I carry on. Uh, I noticed that you know when I moved on, I hadn't, uh, or I'd managed to kill my UV, and I just need to correct that. So before we move on, I'm just going to select the top here. Uh, using L to select uh, the linked geometry and then using the seam and then I'll press shift H to hide everything else right click and unwrap um, and then we'll do alt H to show everything again and I'll just do the same for the bottom so it's L selection to seam shift H to hide everything else right click and unwrap Okay, and then we'll Alt H to come back again, and now I'll select the whole of the barrel. So press L. Now I want to go to Normal, and then Shift H. Now, what I want to do is actually re-unwrap these because that will get me to um, my islands all nice and equal. If I just pack these as they are, uh, go so go to UV and pack islands, it won't resize them. Um, we don't seem to have any options down here to do that so what I prefer to do is just right click and unwrap and that puts the islands back into uh, proportion it's important that they're in proportion because you then make the most of the UV space uh, so I'm going to go to UV and pack now and we've got a margin of 0.01 which is good and that's good so sorry about that uh, <laughs> I managed to make a, a mistake there it's not the first time um, but in the next video we'll go on to you know the first texturing part so I'll talk to you then okay so I've trimmed up the model and uh, we've got down to 8,300 faces from you know 14 to 15,000 uh, which is you know it's it's a good saving it's worth doing okay so what do we do now well if we press tab to come out of exp um, edit mode into object mode I want to make sure I've got my cylinder selected and then file export and then export an OBJ and if I find a, the directory to put it in I've no idea where I put the things <laughs> never mind I'll just put it here for the moment uh, I'm going to export it as barrel trimmed Need to make sure I've got selection only on. If you have more than one thing in the, uh, you know, in the scene, it will export all of them. And I just want this barrel. And and I'll click export. There we go. Okay, so now we need Substance Painter, and this is going to take a moment to launch on my machine. So uh, I think I'll probably speed it up at this point. There we go, right, so what do we need to do? So it's File, uh, New, and then I'm using the P-Bell Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend um, from the starter for my template. And then I'm gonna select my model, which I think I put in projects. Yes, that's my barrel. And we'll go for a 2048 resolution. Now, the DirectX format, um, it depends upon what application is your target. Um, I use ones that generally use OpenGL, so I'll switch to OpenGL here. Blender, for example, uses OpenGL, so I'm going to use OpenGL. Uh, none of these options are necessary, and we've already unwrapped it, so we don't need an auto unwrap, so then I'll click OK. And that should come in in a second. There we go. So on our texture set list then we can see we've got our bands and our barrel, which means we can create different materials between the two. Um, we've got our, you know, we can switch between these two and we'll see the UV map in the 2D view. If you don't have the 2D view up, you can look up here and you can do a 2D, 3D uh, view to show both. 
Um, but the first thing we need to do is break our maps. So substance, um, substance's power is really uh, based upon the fact that it bakes out a bunch of texture maps for you. So the curvature, uh, which is kind of a calculation of the difference in angle between two points. Um, we have the occlusion, so it calculates that depending upon how much light a particular part of your object might get. Um, it also has things like thickness and uh, um, height and all sorts of things. So let me just show you how to bake. So we go to our texture set settings and then we click on this box with a, a slash through it and then bake mesh maps. So I have a normal selected um, world space normal ID I don't usually use uh, ambient occlusion curvature position and thickness um, I don't use height, bent normals or opacity in this case um, but if you're going to use one of those then yeah, include it of course. I'm going to set my uh, output size as the same as my painting size which we set as 2048 when we came in and then uh, for the ambient occlusion I'm just going to increase the amount of rays. The more rays that you do the more accurate it is but the slower it is. So, you know, if your machine's not super, super duper, you might want to reduce it down just a little bit. Uh, we have a minimum and a maximum occlusion distance, which we may uh, change later. Uh, I'm going to turn off relative to bounding box and the spread angle at 180. There we go. And then curvature again, increase my secondary rays and sampling radius on levers default and then we have position which I don't change and thickness which I uh, increase the secondary rays on. Okay so as we go through this I'm going to deal with all these maps and we may rebake one at one point in time uh, but for the moment I'm just going to press the um, bake selected textures but before I do that because I'm a foolish man I didn't tell you to hit the apply to all button because I've got more than one material and these materials are, um, sorry, these settings are per material. I just need to click apply to all on each of them, or each that I changed anyway. So position isn't offering me it because I didn't change it. Okay, so now I can bake selected textures and it's going to go through the process of calculating the maps according to the various algorithms. Okay, so this will finish in a sec um, and then I'll stop the video and in the next one we're going to start our texturing process by building up our base colour layers. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so with our maps baked uh, we can now start to add some uh, materials to this. So first thing I would do is I'm just going to switch to my Pure 3D view. There we go. And now we're going to add a material in. So on the materials tab in the library, just click on that. Um, type in wood and you'll get a selection of woods, some of the base woods. Uh, this one I think I got from um, the substance source many moons ago. Um, and I'm going to use this one basically. Uh, so first of all I want to be on the barrel texture or uh, material. I'm going to delete this default layer and then I'm going to drag and drop my wood rough into there. And you'll see it comes in and while the top looks okay the sides don't and that's because the grain is going at 90 degrees to where we want it. If I now switch back to my 2D, 3D uh, you might get an idea as to why. So the grain of the texture is going from left to right our islands are going from up to down but that's easy to repair all we need to do is in the properties for the fill layer we're going to type in 90 degrees rotation and now it's pointing in the right direction that's perfect so that's a good start the actual scale of this is quite good but you could update your tiling uh, for that if you wished uh, but now we need to pick a, uh, a, cut, uh, a metal for our bands. So I'm going to 
type metal in instead of wood and it's going to give me a whole bunch of default metals i think all of mine are more or less default except this iron chain mail which is something i made in, a, in another video i think uh, so we're going to go with an iron uh, we don't want pure because that will be too uh, shiny uh, i think raw might be a good one so i'm going to select the bands material and i'm going to drag and drop my iron raw in and delete that layer so that comes in like that i can see that the grain on it is probably a little uh, too large so i need to increase the scale of my texture so if i type in two for my tiling you should see it starts to become finer and if i now type say four it will become even finer so just adjust your material until it you know it starts to behave uh, like you want it to or starts to look like you want it to i think i want it a little bit finer than that so i've gone to six there we go now this doesn't look like you know the barrel reference i have uh, yet um, that's all going to come in the next few videos or the next few uh, sections um, in the next section we're going to start to work on the wood and you know get it to a state where it looks much much better okay so i will talk to you then okay so first thing we're going to do is define the edges on these planks so in the barrel texture uh, i'm going to add a new fill layer and on this fill layer i'm going to add a black mask so masking is a uh, key in substance you spend a lot of time masking so it's something really to get the hang of um i have another video i think uh, no i definitely do about the mask editor which i would urge you to to have a look at so i've added a black mask and now i'm going to add a generator and for this generator i'm going to use the uv borders now i've left the 2d up so we can see what's going on so if i switch over to the mask view uh, you'll see that my, this is what my mask looks like the the white is going to be let through and the black is not um, so what this uv generator does is um, uses the uv view to outline each of those pieces and that's one of the reasons why i personally find it important to have a nice uv not just use a projection uv to have something which you know is going to make use of this sort of thing uh, but as it is it's a bit useless so we're going to adjust it so the first thing i'll do is take the distance down there we go and now i've got a much kind of sharper edge and that's going to help me define uh, some of that detail in our barrel so as well as that we could increase the contrast which will make it much sharper uh, or we could increase the smoothness which will make it a little less uh, harsh uh, but i think i'm going to leave it more or less as it is now what i'm going to do with this is use it to add some height to our model so let's go back to the material view and on the material itself i'm going to turn off everything but height and if you press alt height it will only show the height channel and if i slide down and start to adjust that you'll see if i take that down really far we get a really sharp you know kind of height effect so i don't want it to go down that far so just take it down a bit just until you can see it it might be worth sort of coming out a little bit and looking at your model if you lose your model by the way pressing the f key will focus on it um, so there we have a little bit of definition between our boards and i think that's okay it might be that i just need to adjust my border a little bit so if i take the balance down you'll see i get a much sharper line which is you know looks like a good gap between those barrels there we go and because i've uv mapped my planks in one long loop um, it goes right over the edges and gives you a good effect again all part of the 
uh, importance of UV mapping to me makes this texturing process much easier. If you use a projection map or an atlas map or something along those lines, you tend to find that um, you lose the ability of using things like the uh, the UV border distance generator to help you quickly. <laughs> okay, so that's defining those. Uh, in the next piece, we'll have a look at our uh, second step, and I think what we'll do next is. Uh, add a broad layer of dirt across everything. Um, so I will talk to you then. Okay, let's uh, get some dirt on this. I'll switch back to just the 3D view. And we need a new layer for this. So on my barrel, I'm going to slip my top layer and then add a new fill layer. And that will come in white. And I generally leave it white to start with because uh, we're going to use a black mask and then a generator to apply our dirt. So the generator we'll use is the dirt generator and that uses a combination of maps to calculate dirt. So it's using the curvature map and the occlusion map and it's got a little extra dirt on it. So you'll notice that our occlusion map is uh, making it very dirty where the, the bands are meeting the, the wood. Um, where the, uh, the lip is coming in, that's good. And yeah, that's all pretty lovely. Um, except to say, we can adjust this. So let me pull this up. So each generator generally has adjust adjustments on them. Um, so we can adjust the dirt level and the contrast. Uh, we can use a triplanar or a non-triplanar projection. Uh, if I turn that to triplanar, you'll see what happens. Um, a, it's just that currently it's projecting just straight onto the UV. The triplanar projects from each side of the model to calculate where it would appear in the UV. Um, we have a grunge amount. So the grunge is kind of the extra here. If I turn that off, this is what it's getting from the maps. So from the curvature and the occlusion map. If I increase the grunge amount, you'll see it gradually gets dirtier and dirtier. Um, one thing you could do here is adjust the scale of the grunge map and I'm going to adjust that so it's uh, a little lower so I get a coarser um, dirt over the over the, the top of the hole. Okay so uh, I could use a custom grunge, a different uh, texture to uh, get a different dirt out. I'm not going to do that just now. Uh, but I am going to use uh, the micro details. Now this is quite a key thing in here. Uh, so our boards we've defined with some height on a previous layer. But we can reference that layer and add it to our dirt generator. We do that by right clicking on the mask in the layer we're interested in. And then adding an anchor point. And if I just give this, I'll call it uh, boards anchor. And now we can identify it, you know, when we're picking. If I have a lot of these, see if I don't name them, I'll forget where they are or what they are. So in my dirt generator, down the bottom, we have a micro height option. So if I click on that and then go to anchor points and select my boards anchor, this will enable me to use this in this calculation. So then open up micro details and enable micro height. And you'll see that immediately it's put in some more definition to those boards. And what I just want to do is adjust some of these to get a nicer effect. It's a little harsh at the moment. So uh, we have some options here. So we can change the calculation type and you'll notice differences between these. See that smooth, uh, smooth things out a little bit, but not too much. Um, but I think smooth is perhaps what we want to go with. We then have some uh, options here, and some of these, depending upon you know the map you're referencing, will and won't work. So if I adjust the curvature intensity, for example, uh, nothing's happening. If I increase and decrease the height de details you'll see it's either getting stronger or weaker 
and then we have an AO radius and that's going to allow me to adjust how strong the edges are defined and then we have an AO depth which helps us with the you know the depth of things so that's given me a nice chance to just update just further define the edges of those boards but now uh, what I want to do is actually you know make this effect a bit more sensible so what I want this to be um, is darker and I want it to be not as shiny as whatever's below it so if I look at the wood rough we have a roughness and it's set at point 8 and I could reduce that and it will become much much shinier underneath I'm going to take it down to about half and that's going to demonstrate quite well I think so everything's quite shiny at the moment but if I come up to my fill layer uh, my top fill layer which is my dirt layer um, we're gonna press alt and click rough and then just click color so we've just got the color and rough um, channels selected and I'm going to increase my roughness so that where my map is being exposed is going to roughen that surface compared to what's below it and then for our base color I'm going to darken that down to quite a dark gray to you know make it dirty don't want it to be white I want it to be dirty so and if you wonder you know what effect that is having upon your model you can always click this eye here and it will give you what's going on so that's pretty nice I think that's come out pretty good okay we also you know want to dirty up the the bands so let's go to the bands and what I'm going to do for that is I'm first of all I'm going to make them rougher and then I'm going to change my base color a little bit I'm just going to take it down to make it darker it needs to be a little more rough there we go perhaps not quite that rough um, and now we'll just put another layer to add some dirt to that so I'm going to right click and duplicate this layer and then I'm going to make it rougher and darker and now we'll add a black mask and right click and add a generator and then we're going to add in the dirt generator and now we've got a nice dirt going all around of our metal which is you know roughening and darkening where the dirt is is hitting and that looks pretty nice i think okay so in the next video we're going to have a look at um, highlighting edges um, so i will talk to you then okay so we want to pick up some edges here we want to put some perhaps wear and rust uh, on the edges of these metal straps uh, so on the bands material select the top layer and we're going to add another fill and then right click add a black mask and right click and add a generator so for the generator here we're going to use um, this metal edges there we go so metal edges has got some options we could do and that's already come out pretty nice uh, but we can adjust the wear level which is what I want to do I don't want it to be quite so much um, we can adjust the wear contrast so we can either make it very fuzzy or we can make it very sharp uh, I'm going to uh, verge on sharp here we've got triplanar uh, we've got a grunge amount and if you turn that off you'll notice that the edge is very very sharp so having that uh, grunge in there is very good and you can change the scale to get the sort of effects you want there's a smoothness that we can do and I'm going to just adjust that a little bit just to get a bit more creep out of the edges uh, and we have ambient occlusion so it's using the ambient mask as well and if I take that out or make it stronger in fact this seems to be using the ambient almost entirely uh, and we also have a curvature weight so there we go 
So I want somewhere around there. I don't want this to be obscured, which it was when the curvature weight was high and the edge masking was low or the occlusion masking was low. So I'm going to uh, increase the occlusion masking and decrease the curvature weight to get a sharper edge, but still maintaining a bit of fuzziness with the grunge. There we go. Okay, so that's all very well. Uh, but what do we want to do with it? Well, in this case, uh, there is some rust in our library. So I'm going to drag a rust over to here, but I'm not going to drag. I'm just going to select the layer and then click on rust fine and that will add it in. That looks maybe a bit dark. So let's try this rust coarse. And that's a bit shiny. So I'm going to go for the rust fine and then we can adjust how strong this effect is by either changing the rust color or we can change the opacity. So I'm going to take that down a little bit just so it's not quite so uh, intense. And now we've got a nice kind of rusty edge all over our uh, all on our bands, which is good. Now uh, we also want to do some edges work on the barrels. And for that I'm going to need a copy of this wood rough. So right click and duplicate it. And then I'm going to raise it to the top of the stack. And in this case, what I'm going to do is lighten it up a bit. So let me just move this upwards so we can see. Uh, go to HSV and I'm going to just take the, uh, the V and reduce it so it's lighter. So what I'm sort of simulating is wood underneath, dirtier wood underneath, you know, which may be varnished or not. So I'm going to increase the roughness so it's much rougher than the other wood and then we're going to obscure it with a mask. So it's right click, mask, right click, generator. We'll use our metal edge wear again. And when that's calculated, it will come out. Now, sometimes it's difficult to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my mask view. And now the white areas are where it's going to um, show through our uh, underlying texture. And I just want to adjust that to yeah, make it a little nicer. So if I take the wear level right down, I'm just going to get pretty much the edges and we can increase the contrast to make it a bit more definite, um, less, you know, fuzzy. Um, we can increase the grunge to get a bit more, you know, grunge over the entire barrel. Uh, I'm going to reduce the grunge scale uh, because, you know, you can see it becomes repeaty if the scale is too high. So I'm going to reduce it down so it uh, doesn't repeat so much. And apart from that, I think that's good. So let's switch back to our material. And that's what it looks like. Uh, so what I want to do here is just perhaps adjust this a little bit. Um, this color is perhaps not light enough. I want it to be more contrasted. There we go. So now you, you can definitely see that, yeah, this barrel has had a bit of a hard life. It's been knocked about a bit. And uh, yeah, it's all good. Another thing you could do uh, on this is add a bit of depth to it. Um, but I think that's for another tutorial. Okay, so in the next uh, video, what I'm going to do is um, add to a mask with a new layer, uh, a new layer within the black mask. And uh, I should show you a few techniques for that to, you know, uh, expand and you know, refine what you're doing. Okay, so I shall talk to you then. Okay, so as I said, um, we're going to expand our texture to include uh, another, you know, texture to enhance our, our mask. And we're going to use the, uh, the wood up here that I've, uh, you know, we used on the edges. And up here we're just going to right click and add a fill. So we can use fill layers you know for almost anything really um, you know masking and painting and you know all sorts of things. Um, all we need to do is go to our textures directory 
and I'm just going to clear my filter here um, and we're going to add one of these textures in so what I'm going to do first of all up here is just type grunge because there's a whole bunch of grunge textures we can use uh, where are we I want to find a nice one I want to find one which has got some you know very contrasted dark and light areas and let's have a look uh, it's kind of directional and drippy let's try this one oh no let's try this one this one looks good so I'll drag and drop that into there and as you can see it's completely overridden our underlying um, material so what we need to do is change the blending mode so if I change this to a multiply you'll see it highlights where both intersect and if I change this uh, to perhaps a linear dodge add we'll get both in so now we've got both of our uh, textures you know, combining together to make a mask uh, but what I want to do is just adjust this grunge layer so we have um, a few options down here uh, we could invert it for example uh, or we could not uh, we can adjust the balance to uh, increase or decrease the strength and the contrast to make it sharper or softer you see the higher it is the sharper it is the lower it is the softer it is I'm going to go quite high because I want it um, a bit more localized and that's looking pretty nice um, so each of our boards at this point in time seems to have a different layer of dirt on it and I think that's quite good um, because you know it shows that they are separate that they are not you know all one thing if you wanted this to be uh, across the whole thing all we need to do is change the layer projection so or the fill projection rather so currently it's projecting onto the UV uh, but if I switch that to triplanar you'll see it comes to everything so it's just projecting from each side of our model and I don't think it's as good frankly um, so I'm going to stick I think with a UV projection and now each board has got its own kind of character each board has its own you know sense of um, having a life of some description um, yeah that's it that's that really okay so adding multiple layers to your mask is perfectly possible you just have to adjust your blend modes to get them to work together and your projection mode to get the kind of effect you want okay so there we go um, one last thing that I'm going to do is we're going to use one more generator to make this sit on something uh, we're going to affect the whole of the bottom of our barrel so that you know it's sat you know maybe absorb some water it's been on a, on a wet floor okay so we'll have a look at that in the next bit thank you okay so one last uh, layer here so I'm going to duplicate my wood rough and move it to the top of my stack oops might have to do that in a couple of bounds there we go and we're going to add a black mask to it and then we're going to add a generator and this generator will use position so uh, where is it linear curvature I know it's here somewhere position there we go in alphabetical order as you kind of expect it to be so let's go over to our mask view and we can see what's going on so the light part is going to be where it's showing through and the dark part is where it's uh, going to be obscured so we want to flip this around so first of all what I'll do is hit global invert and it's going to reverse our options and then I'm going to take the balance and take it down a bit I'm going to blur it a bit get some nice work there and then I'm going to increase the contrast so I don't want all of this to 
be linear you know just be a gradient I want to break it up so we use our other technique for that so we're going to add a fill layer in here so it's right click and uh, add fill providing I remember where it is and we'll change our blend mode to uh, add again and then we're going to pick out a, uh, a nice map uh, I'm going to use this one I think we'll just drag and drop that in and there we go that's pretty good uh, it's you know some of the boards are really getting it some of them aren't uh, but the whole of the bottom is um, we can adjust this still um, by changing the balance and the contrast to get different effects and then when we go back to our material layer we can adjust our material to accommodate so now I want this to go darker so I'm going to uh, just move that up a little bit to make the bottom of the barrel much darker and perhaps it would be less um, you know less dry so I'm going to adjust that so that or just roughness so that we get a little bit of shine going on a little bit more shine than we have over the rest of the barrel and there we have it we have a nice little barrel really um, you can do more to it of course you can enhance it you can add more details but this is meant to be a you know kind of a beginner tutorial to to get you going and get you get you, get you to get some results so i don't want to overwhelm you with all sorts of different techniques i'll do that later in other videos um okay so you know if you're really interested in masking uh, i've got a video about the mask builder uh, which i will link somewhere around uh, on the screen um, i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you've found it useful um, and i'll talk to you in another session